Hello and welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're here working on the decked system. The idea is you'll take a picture of some index cards with words on them and then turn them into virtual cards and work with them that way, maybe mix and match. So um, we've gotten so far as to uh, take the picture, take a given picture, identify rectangles, and now we're working on a spike to match cards. So matching cards, the question is, if I see these two images, are they the same or different? Okay, um, the one on the left is rotated slightly. It's got a slightly bigger heart, and you probably can't even tell, but the font is a different, um, it's a different version of Helvetica, I think, and uh, maybe a point pixel difference in size, but pretty darn close. Most people, you, you could give them these two and they'd say, yes, that's the same card. We don't need this twice, but they're not quite the same. So we have a little uh, work to do to, to identify whether they should be the same or not the same and, and, and go from there. Now, my, my plan my, is really to rely on all the vision stuff that Apple's got and see if we can just make use of that. Uh, let's see. So treat near identical cards as the same card. And there's this notion of VN generate image feature print request. I'm not quite sure if that's the right one, but yeah, this is this is the one. So a feature print, I think, is sort of like analog analogous to a fingerprint. And uh, the idea is if you took a bunch of um, possibilities on a picture, like, oh, this thing has curves, you know, seven curves. And this one has several straight, straight lines and the lines look vertical or horizontal or whatever, um, you know, that image analysis could come up with a bunch of these that sort of tell you what the picture is. And then you would decide based on these things, some TBD way, how do I decide if they're similar enough or not? And uh, if we track through, let's see, this is what we get back is an array of feature print observations. And let's go see what those are. Um, well, they are, data and elements okay and the elements have a type and a size and then we can compute some distance between them that's just between one i'm not sure what that vector this pointer to float is um so i, I don't quite know what's going on it seems like I don't know, like if I get two arrays, are the same feature prints in the same position or something? I don't know. They don't make it clear. Okay, this just is generic. Uh, time, confidence. I thought there somewhere there's something that gives you some similarity scores or something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, this compute distance, I guess if you knew they were the same, um, the same thing. Feature print observation. That was an array, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. And let's see. There's an example program. I think I downloaded it. And then this article, which I found but haven't really looked. Determine Euclidean distance between images with feature prints. Okay. Um, We've got image similarity requests. Not the same as classification, right? Um, okay, yeah, you could compare pixel values. Well, that doesn't work so good. I mean, they're not the same. The, the background shade is a little different. The These pixel values are kind of close, but this one's tilted. So it's going to be, you know, there'll be a little overlap, but not as much as you'd like. Um, all right. Vision feature prints. <laughs> okay. And that sounds promising. So determine the feature prints from a vision request and then compute the Euclidean distance between images. Perform. 
perform requests of feature observation compute ampersand distance. So that's, I guess that's our result to the source. <coughs> Okay, so we may be maybe looking in this one for some ideas, um, but this this is the thing we're going to make use of, and we've already used the image request handler before. Let's go find our code. Um, well, it's probably a rectangle finder. There's a request. Here we go. Image request handler. Okay, so. Um, you get a request handler, given an image, and you ask it to perform a request. Okay. And that's kind of what we did over here, or what he did over here. Um, request handler, image request handler dot perform request. Okay. Um, the other one we had had a callback. Uh, of what to do once you found it. All right, um, and let's let's find this again. It appears to have no special constructor or anything like that. Okay. Um, and what else have we done? Well, the other thing we did was we set up a spike, and. Uh, Basically, if the spike flag is on, we get a new tab. Um, I don't know, the magic lasso tab. <laughs> um, and we've defined what's on it. Well, there's a score and a compare button and two images. So here's the same image twice. If you compare it, you should get some likelihood of being right. Well, 0.42 is probably not a good answer here. We'd like it to be like 99% sure this is the same image. Um, but that's that's hard coded so yeah no re no reason it should come out uh different okay uh let's see where is our spike here we go okay and here you can see the score the two images coming from the same file and the button calls image comparator and gets similarity and we just hard coded the answer okay so I think what we're going to do is uh, incorporate that stuff. And I, I'm just doing this. I really am trying to do this in kind of a spike mode. I'll leave stuff in, you know, business logic in up here and stuff like that, just to try and make things make things float. Um, you know, it, I'm trying to find some answers more than uh, more than anything. OK, so this notion that we generate one of these requests, that seems reasonable. And, okay, I guess this will we'll use the same thing. So, yeah, let request equal feature print request. And we'll need a handler. And I'll just say handler. There's a vision framework. Hmm. I don't know what vision kit is different. Okay. Yep. All right. And uh, we know we have to uh, do handler dot perform. request okay and I'll call it try and do a catch I think we can catch anything right yeah Okay, so we perform the request, we get the results, hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, let's let's see what we get back. Handler dot perform. Okay, re returns. Oh, I guess you pull it off the request. Okay. Well, we'll just we'll just do this much and see what we get. It may. Okay, so to source result, well, I think that's just result. Distance two. I don't see sort result there. Not sure what he's doing. Okay, request dot result stuff first. We know this thing is supposed to be an array of feature print observations. If we compare Well, I'm a little confused. <laughs> okay, we've got image one. I may call this image two just to kind of keep keep myself straight. Well, okay. I think I think what we're doing is we're taking we're just taking the first observation and calculating this distance compared to I think this should be the second image. So I I really think I need to do this twice, once for each image. Okay, so let's, I'm just gonna <laughs> go sloppy and, and just see what we get. Okay, and if we see anything interesting, then we'll, we'll work from that. Okay, so we're not worrying about options. We got a handler, a request, perform the request. Um, Bar um, uh, observation of feature print observation. Let result equal. Well, result is the observation. Observation equals result. Okay. We'll just assume it's going to work. I guess what it's saying is like this is not needed. Okay, so I'm, I believe what I'm doing is um, taking the image that we're starting with, which is the left hand side image, and we're running this feature request thing over it. 
and I'm just going to print the value it gets back. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing for image two. Um, again, this is probably not needed. All right, distance float, and then source result. Let's see. Well, we really want to do observation dot compute distance to result, I believe. Okay, result is a feature print observation and compute distance we saw in the documentation somewhere. On an observation. Feature print observation has compute distance to a feature point op print observation. Okay, cannot find source result. Uh, again, I'm just going to assume it's really there. Oh, I hate fighting these exceptions, especially in in spike time here. Okay, um, I think the reason is it it only goes to this path here. Let's just oops. Can I do that? Okay, and let's return distance. Do I, is that okay? No. That probably helps too. Cannot convert float to return type double. Well, I don't really care since we made up this. Okay. No errors. Let's run it. So I expect it's not going to be zero and it's not going to be 42. <laughs> Did that run? No. Over. <clears throat> okay. Oddly slow to start. Did not do anything. Didn't get any print. Feature request failed. Okay. <coughs> um, so it failed in the constructor. All right, let's let's run debug. Can I I was hoping to be a little more high level here.
Perform request. Let's see if that comes back. No. Okay. Oh, the syntax. Oh, what do we got to do? Is it like? Find exception in scope. Oh, I still have error. Okay. Okay, perform, catch. Could not create inference context. Okay. <laughs> I can believe there's a simulator issue. I, I don't know about this. We haven't used the request yet, so it should be set. Well, that's doing better. Okay, let's see request. <laughs> Too much stuff. Okay, let's step over. Now we can see result. Say so feature print observation. It's got one element. Constant one. Uh, my model may be not right. 
Um, I certainly expected more than one element in the array. All right, let's let's break down here. Oh, we're gonna have to do the same thing. Okay, so if I step over, feature print observation question mark. I thought the array was the question mark thing. One element of oh, version. Oh, this can be different. Oh, it's a whole thing. Okay. All right, now we're going to see what this thing comes up with. F6. Hmm. Change our breakpoints a little. I think we can get down here safely. Nil error. Is my result not right? Let's continue. We'll do it again. Result. Feature print observation. It seems to be one. Result bang is okay. Distance, I wouldn't think that would be an issue. Observation, let's make sure that looks right. Observation. Let's see self. Ooh, he is a nil. How did he? We called the initializer. We certainly thought this was, oh, 
Um, how about if we return here? Okay, step over. All right. Continue. Okay, distance is zero, I guess. It's identical images. Let's go back to Spike U. We have a yacht two. Okay. And we'll run it again. Now, this image, you can see it's, um, the first one is kind of in rows. The second one's more in columns. They're different sizes. They have the same cards, but different order. And I don't expect the distance to be zero. Okay. What do we do with this information? Hmm. I don't quite know what to do with that. Let's. Um, let me go back here. I've got yacht one, yacht two. Let's see, if I were to make. Let me muck with these images. All right, and let's just do some. Let's change exposure can I tell the difference okay this looks much more defined higher contrast all right let's do that Let's export as yacht three. this okay the distance was 18.29 let's run this again this time with an image that's much more similar six point three two six hmm All right, let's let's go back to this article. <laughs> so, I mean, the the number is definitely smaller, uh, which the distance is less. I guess that's good. The thing I'm puzzled with. Let's let's go back here. Image feature request. It generates an array of feature print observations. 
It looked like there was only one thing in the array. Okay, but our thing printed stuff. Scene observation. Well, I don't know what that means. This is the observation itself, which is one feature print observation. Okay, let's print a little more. <laughs> print result dot is like items or count what's the type of result feature print observation I guess dot data and dot element count result count. Okay. And let's give ourselves a little more information here. <laughs> Observation. All right, compare. Came back fast, 6.32, count 2048. All right, so I'm puzzled, puzzled, puzzled. Okay, so the observation, feature print observation, I thought this thing ret returned an array. Maybe I'm feature print observation. Feature print request. Okay, so the results is an array, optional array of VN feature print observations. Each one of these has data and elements. Oh, and is willing to compare to another feature print observation. Okay. I thought somehow we were having to compare the data ourselves. But the funny thing is, oh, I think I get it. I think, I think the request, where'd it go? Okay. I think when you make the request, um, you get back well I was going to say you can make a request to compare a bunch of images and so you'd get an array of feature observations but it seems like each observation is a bunch of data points right so that's reasonable um Okay, so if it consists of 22,000 observation things, 
uh, characteristics or something, right? We don't care what they are, but they're, they're strings and inserts, strings and floats or something like that. Um, at this level, I'm just, I'm, I'm lost on why there's, you've got one thing here, you request a feature print for an item. And then you get a result, an array back. And why is it optional? That doesn't make sense to me either, but. Okay. Well, uh, normally we take a break about now, so this is probably a good moment to do that. Um, we'll come back, we'll dive deeper into that example and see um, what they've got going on. I mean, it looked from that first piece that they were just assuming there's going to be one observation coming back and uh, uh, it doesn't take into account that there might be multiple ones. I don't know why there's multiple. When you do the perform, you can request a bunch. Right, because we... Where's perform? It takes an array of requests, but it seemed like the request is the thing that has the array of features, so I'm not sure. Okay, the results, I mean, in the request. All right, so uh, two or three minutes, then we'll be back. Hi, welcome back. All right, so, well, what we've got so far... <laughs> Um, it does compare two images and it comes back with a score that represents some sort of distance calculation that we don't know how it's done, but it's done based on the, the vector or the, uh, the feature observation feature thing of each one. Okay. And had some question about like there's arrays running around and do we get them back and so on. Um, I think... What would be the next thing? It it certainly does compute something. Why it's results that first? Perform request. You know, maybe we need to make three images and so so what happens is um so imagine you've you've taken a picture of of your cards like this and then you split them into uh the rectangles like we did earlier so the vision analysis gets most of them but not all of them but uh it's it's figured out that these cards exist and if you look at them they look like the right cards. I mean, and we've sorted them in order, um, basically kind of top to bottom, left to right order. Okay. And what happens next is, well, what I would like to happen next is you come in with a different picture and the system should identify those cards and then match them up, which is kind of an end by end match, right? Um, to see if any of them are the same cards. Okay, so if, if you know, all you did was move them around, they're still the same cards, and we would like to know that they're the same cards. Um, so I think maybe if I push a little more towards that, and I think what's going to happen is my request, I don't know, I'm going to feed the two, well... Okay, so let's take this picture. Chink, we took a picture. It's just got the first three cards in it. And it identifies those cards in the new picture. And then I want to say, for each for each card, does it match anything in the old old setup? Okay, so I guess I want to go the, the short way. So for each card in the old setup, how, how well do you match these new cards? 
and the first one should match very thoroughly and the second one should match you know further down further you know very thoroughly but those other ones on the right they shouldn't match at all i mean they should come out as poor matches um i really would rather they had done this more like probabilities like the probability this is the same image is x <laughs> zero to one you know kind of thing um i don't know if i can transform that all right and so i think in terms of code what would happen is if we had taken a picture we had the three cards that came in and i want to match them up against the existing cards i would have to run a, a loop basically i'd loop over the existing cards and loop over these new ones and find out uh, which which one has the best matches and presumably we'd present those to you and you'd say yes they're the match or we would just assume it's the right match I don't know how accurate it's going to be um, so if I did that anyway I think what would happen is I would put the I would create an array of all the new pictures and I'd be on image one and say hey image one um, why don't you compare yourself to these and figure out which one you're most similar to? And um, give me hmm. If you're similar enough to any of them, I want to know about it. You theoretically shouldn't be similar to all of them, but you know there should be a best match. Now, here, I think he gets results step first because he's only making one request. So, um, because he's doing them one at a time. And that's probably a way to start. But um, it's going to be faster, presumably, if I gave it all three at the same time and, and let it do something. Now, you would think, I don't know, I would think that seems like it's the kind of problem that would already be dealt with. But, okay. Viewing observations. See, that's why they did the cast because these are special types of observations. I don't know how it would know, but it seems happy with it. Okay, what's well, a good next step? Let's go look at that example. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, so here's his thing of doing one thing, which is basically what we did. Uh, take an initial image, or rather take an image, generate this feature request, ask for the observations, and then do a bunch of compute distances. Oh, so that tells me, <laughs> yeah. So what it tells me is I probably should take my, I should be keeping these feature observations. They're, they're computed. You only need to compute them once per image. Okay, uh, let me write that down somewhere. That seems like a good learning from this. Okay. Um, generate an observation. Uh, when image is created, store with it, use the observations for n by n comparison with compute distance. Okay. Yes, that puts it much more, okay, that, that makes more sense to me then well okay and and what i can maybe do is if you take a picture like like this one i could pass in all these images in an array to you and you would come back with a bunch of results okay corresponding to that whole set okay so i don't have to do it at the initial moment i create the image 
but it's it's good to keep it around okay although it, it's a data cost i mean 2000 observations 2000 doubles it, yeah, you know a few k there's there's bigger wastes in life i guess okay um right so if every image has its let's say it's observation i don't know we get a maybe it's maybe it's a feature feature has its features i don't know um but every image has its features and then you can compare two images by doing this compute distance call because compute distance just takes two observations okay that's that's good <laughs> i feel like i'm learning something all right now what's what's going on it, these numbers are throwing me off you know 6.32 I don't know it I really wish yeah it's kind of a it's not a bad background uh, let's see you can see it better on here it's the back of a quilt okay um, but it's mostly solid red I don't know what happens with the the little border it gives things, you know. It's like does it um does it care about the details of that border? That's kind of boring. I mean, each one is slightly different because of the way the fabric is, but you know, we don't care. Um Let's see, can we pull cards into the spike? That's maybe an interesting question. Well, okay, uh, we're at a point here. Let's let's save. So we did a spike with um, VN feature point, what's it called? Feature print. Is this, no? this <clears throat> oh I didn't add that Okay, so um, there's a weirdness that the, the spike is comparing these two full things, but really I want a card-by-card -card basis. Um, so I think let's, let's get to the point where a card tracks its observations and maybe creates them when it's created. I don't know how slow that is. I, I know some of the vision stuff can get slow at times. I mean, it was noticeable for that, for the rectangle stuff. Yeah, it, it was worse at one point. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, so Uh, let's go put our, take our spike hat off and go back to the real situation. Okay. A card. 
you give it an image, a placement, and I think I would like to have it know, like when you, when you create the card, um, I think we should get the f features for it. All right. And I don't know, is features optional? You could certainly fail to get one. Hmm. I don't know. This is... It's a little tricky. All right. So I think what I want to say is there's a way to ask for the features. And I'm not quite sure what to do on the error handling side of this, really. Okay, let's find cards, tests. Okay, right now, yeah, it's really just uh, just copying stuff in. I don't know why this would not be generated. Let's take this off and see what happens. I think we only need that if if we don't always supply it. Okay, so where don't we supply it? Well, there's one. And, hmm, does his placement matter? Well, interestingly, this is in all three, right? So, I thought we had a constructor for this thing. Yeah, X, Y, width, height. And what I want to say is this is not is this part of the identity of a card? Two cards with the same image and different coordinates. I think, well, it won't happen really. Yeah, only the ID matters. Okay, so let's do this, whoops. Be that. This one, okay, so card 1B is supposed to be identical, and we want it identical basically by its creation, uh, by its identifier only. Okay, so this should still pass. And notice that this is only the, the only place that complained about that lack was here. So that just means it was a t only the tests don't pass rectangles. And probably rectangles weren't part of the original thing at some point. I'm pretty sure that's the case. All right. So um, we um, make CG rect required for a card, but not part of its... Um, identity test required.
quality test. Okay, so now we got the CG wrecked, and we want to say a card knows its features. Now, I think this is going to be a similar test. In a sense, I, I want to, um, I want image card 1A and card 1B to come out as very similar and um, card 1 versus card 2 should be very different. Okay, um, so let's let um, features 1A equals card 1A dot features it doesn't exist yet and we'll get all three features two and one B okay now I'm gonna make use of that code from the spike uh, comparator all right, we're going to use this thing. And maybe this should be two tests. I don't know. All right. Yeah, that's that's probably the case. Okay, let's... Uh, um, Cards from same image have um, are, are very close. How about features from same image are very close? All right, let me duplicate the test. Let's take card two out of the picture. And I'm going to just say throws. Taking a while to get this together, but okay. Try observation dot calculate. Distance is Well, I think we'll assert equal distance 0, 0.0. Actually, um, is there a fuzz? Maybe I should assert less than this. That's the one I want. Numeric, numeric accuracy.
distance should be 0, 0.0 plus or minus that. Okay. Um, that one oh it's okay all right good okay let's try and make this a little more readable okay we've got an image we um, we form a card with each one with slightly different Point rectangles. Um, no, it's still not quite right. XCT. Assert equal. Oh, if I say accuracy. Take an image, form two cards from the same image, get the features from each card, um, calculate the distance between them, and it should basically be zero. Okay. And then let's go ahead and put together the second test. We'll just do card one. And features one. Card should be complaining here too, but um, okay. This we can say assert greater than, and maybe I don't need the cast here. So features one dot compare to features two. Like value of type double two type string. No. What's oh, do I not need accuracy here? Okay. All right. These two should fail. Usually you just write one at a time, but uh, we'll just live it up for the moment here. Okay. Doesn't compile. I know it's right here. Okay. Um, it's not got that stuff. Okay, so let's pull that. Okay, so we have to do this. I'm gonna make it pass first. <laughs> um, well, we get this too. No, we don't need distance. Okay. 
we're, we're going to have some refactoring to do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to create a handler with image and options. We're going to make a feature request. We're going to tell it to use CPO only for now. Um, Okay, so we need features. B of type. Now, I don't know the right handling, unfortunately. It, it, I certainly have to store some properties, so that's that's fine. Um, but if I don't have it, I don't know if I want to throw. Let's let's just default it. Okay. Um, That'll fold cards together, but okay. But the real thing is we want to say features equals request dot response. What do we do? Results. Dot first. And we'll force it. Okay. So I'm saying this thing should succeed. If it succeeds, we should be able to pull out the features. If it, if the handler perform fails or the results don't include any features for it, then it'll throw an exception and we'll just create a dummy, uh, dummy features. Um, can we get through our test with that? Well, let, I guess I jumped far, didn't I? Let's let's take this line out. Okay. Um, the test failed to compile, but they didn't really fail to run because they never compiled. But, oops. Has no member features. Do anything with that. Okay. The card has no member features. I thought I fixed that. I guess it's public. Call can throw, but is not marked with try. I guess I still have to say try, but the throws clause should cover me, I think. Yeah. Okay, same thing down here. Okay, card has no member features. I think it does now. Turn. Well, let's do this. Okay, both tests should fail. 
Yeah, caught an error, nil error, fine, fine. Okay. Why is it a nil error? All right, let's take this out. They should pass now. I'm a little worried about that nil error. But... All right, good. Okay, so now cards know their features. So what what I'm seeing that I didn't like. Um, Oh, hey, uh, sorry, missed, missed your chat there. Yeah, um, so, yeah, doing TDD style um, on this program to uh, find images. So the normal case is somehow you get an image in, it's a picture of file cards, you're going to process it to identify them, which mostly works, and then once you do, it breaks them up into individual cards in the in the list eventually we'll get back to a 2d matrix and all that but this is a little simpler and what we're doing now is if you if you have two images like these two i don't know if you can notice but the one on the right is noticeably darker um we would like to be able to deal with images that are even more different than that you know we want to find the same card and match it up against the two um you know match them up together so we if we load a new image that has the same cards in a different position, we want to recognize it's the same images around. And uh, we're using a lot of uh, vision stuff from, from Apple. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's see. Did I check that in, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so at this point, we now have cards that know um, the features. And we did a little spike work to compare them let's see, I guess that's down here okay so uh, in here we do these compute distances and um, uh, that tells us how far apart in some sense <laughs> they are uh, sort of use case well I'm, I'm thinking of um, building outlines or user stories or um, uh, like I had a uh, sort of a map like this of uh, when I teach a course, like, you know, three days in advance, send this and, you know, well, four weeks in advance, start advertising and three week, three days in advance, send this um, just sort of note cards of any sort. It could be um, flash cards like you might, you know, this could be the uh, English and Italian translation or something or a picture and, and, and words or something like that. Um, mostly I just kind of want to play with the notion that you can kind of blend having them online or having them, you know, in, in your hand and um, be able to just kind of move things on the table, take a picture, and then any data you attach to these cards already recognize it's the same card and can use that data uh, in the same way. So if I, if I change my mind about which story to implement first in this example, um, I'd like it to remember that, you know, I, you know, already marked this card as, you know, scoring related or something, you know, whatever information I attach to it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, it's also an, ex an excuse to play with the vision stuff. So I'd never messed with that before. All right. Um, yeah. So my concern from the design end is, eh, this stuff, like all this stuff, it doesn't feel like card per se, you know, it feels like some other thing. I'm willing to kind of ride it for now. Um, and, you know, see where it goes. Also, I think this, we've got this in two places now, or potentially, and this is, uh, it's only needed for the simulator for whatever reason they don't, Simulate the GPU, I guess, which which the image stuff uses heavily. Um, so I'm I'm not happy that this stuff is part of card because card is otherwise very simple. 
the feature I think is associated with the card is a characteristic of the image. And in a sort of caching sense, we don't want to generate the feature every single time we, we reference uh, different cards. So I think that's okay. But I will let it ride for now. But let me leave a to-do or, a, yeah, in here we'll just raise the question. Um, should feature identification be owned by card or a helper class? Okay. All right. And I think we're moving out of spike mode here as well. So let's, let's mark this as done or at least, yeah, I think we're done for now. Um, DKT is 2210. Okay, um, right. So we're working our way back up from the, the cards. All right, so I've got cards that know these things. Now, image comparator. Um, I don't think this class is referenced by anybody other than the spike. Find selected text. Okay, yeah, it's only only used by the spike. So it's it's not a real thing yet. And okay, so let's see. Oh yeah. Um hey can what can you point me where to go for that? <laughs> I did look around a bit, but didn't see much. Twitch dashboard. Is that one of these things? Dashboard Twitch TV, cool. I won't play with it today, but I will definitely uh, uh, work my way towards it next time. Probably just faster to do this. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks so much. Let me let me capture that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm I'm constantly guilty of of uh, missing missing that out. I moved it to this screen so I would see it, and I still just miss it for whatever reason. Okay. Um, okay. So. The, the notion image comparators, so in our spike we said, oh, you're going to start with an image and then we're going to compare it to another image using compute distance. Thanks. Um, and this thing is the heart of that. So I think, I think what the real case is, is I give you an image and I give you, well, yeah, I give you a, a first image and then either, I guess, an array of images and and you tell me which ones sort of rise to the threshold that, that that's the same image. Hmm. That sounds kind of, <laughs> sounds like a lot to ask. I don't know how good this stuff is. Um, so what would do that? So, so I think, I think, the information, I mean, all this is like wrapping around this. I, I guess, yeah. So what, what are you going to be after is, um, let me just type in here. So the idea is you have uh, start with a list of current images and have a list of new images and then you want to do com compare all um, to see if any are the same okay and if they are you you merge them um, well I'm 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 kind of a weird person to watch for how to do iOS probably <laughs> um, I worked on um, the old style uh, Xcode had the the UI kit and all that stuff. I worked on that way way back when, 
uh, as a next programmer for a while and then then apple bought it and incorporated it in um but i took a, a a long time off between working on next and then working on ios recently so it's kind of hard to know if uh <laughs> if i work the same as anybody else does but uh I'm using the same stuff they are, and I format it the same, I guess. I, I think TDD is not as common in this world as, as maybe in the Java world, although um, the XC test stuff is built in. Um, uh, you know, it's kind of out of the box provided by, by Xcode. Uh, so, so the frameworks are there. Maybe it's used more than I know about. But I haven't worked on a team doing an iOS app as opposed to a Next app at all. So I don't, don't, um, I have a lot of holes, <laughs> but I'm working through them. So, you know, that, that part at least is, is useful. And, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, so I think, I think what, what that, what that means is for similarity, um, given an image and a list of new images, Tell me if any of the new images are the same. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. Uh, yeah, so I think this is the kind of thing that's going to happen in what we're doing. All right, so right now we don't have a, a similarity thing that does that exactly. All right, so I'm going to, hmm, we don't have any image comparator tests either. So this was, this was purely done for spiking. I'm going to leave a fair bit behind. Hmm, maybe I'll just delete my spike. I don't know. Maybe we're there. Okay, um, I'll use what we got. So let's, let's make a test. There's a way to do this. Nope, that's not. I'll just build one. Okay. And this thing, um, new file. So this text suite generator thing is from John Reed, R E I D. Um, he has a number of packages. He's Q coding on, uh, um, Twitch here, but, uh, he, he just provides a little, little framework or a little starter starter test. Uh, so this will be image comparator does test dot swift. Okay. Uh, so this testable import is part of it, XC test, and then uh, it extends a test case and starts with TEST, kind of like old school J unit <laughs> two or something. Um, Okay, so what I'm saying I want, and I don't know, in some ways this is a little speculative, but um, I'm kind of working from the bottom to the top, which I don't usually do too much. But um, So this comment down here is kind of my guide. I'll delete these eventually, but just to get it here. All right. So I'm saying, um, image matches an identical image. Um, and so Let's start with the assert. I'm going to assert that um, best match is equal to image two. <laughs> I think. Let's let's see. So I got image. Um, let's go back to card. Um, no, it's not even coming from there. Yeah, let's do this. OK. 
Okay, so if I if I have image, which is yacht one, and then um, image one equals uh, let's see what we got in here. Well, I know I have yacht two, and let's do yacht two, yacht three, and yacht one. Let's do one and three. Okay, image two, image three. Okay, so I'm saying the best match really ought to be image one with an identical image. Okay, so best match is, um, well, I guess the image comparator Do you want to create one per text, per image? Let's do that, image. OK. Yeah, I am. It, it's probably a weakness that I don't bother creating in memory images and stuff like that, but um, I'm, I'm okay doing it. <laughs> um, they're just sample data in here. So um, they probably, you probably should consider these more part of the product, um, the, the testing package, but uh, right now I've hard coded an image to, to pull. So um yeah, it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a better way creating something in memory. Like I have to, I have to somehow create, you know, uh, a bunch of image stuff. So I'm kind of okay doing this. But yeah, a better person might find a better way. I don't know. Okay, uh, so this is let best match equal so my my vision is you're going to create a comparator with a given image and then you're going to feed it a bunch of new images and uh you're going to get back the best match hmm and if if it fails what should it be well i i don't know it almost is nullable nullable at this point So let's let's assume that. I, I guess if you don't, um, could it be? Yeah, I'm not sure, but we'll start there. Okay, so uh, image comparator is going to take an image. All right, um, I'll just call it image. And uh, self.image equals image one. Okay, so this part, we trust. Um, I think this part, I can move up I don't even need this stuff now uh, image one I just need to save hmm should I be comparing cards that's maybe what I should be doing okay so let's revise our test <laughs> um, card And we're not going to worry about the rectangles. Okay.
I guess you, your foundation, or are you a kid? Now this one best match. Okay, cannot find image two. Card two. Still not finding it, huh? There's no way it's vision. Find CG React. Wow. I think I can build, right? Oh, now come on. I use it here with these three imports. If I spell it right, it works. Value best match. Okay. This thing's a little off. <laughs> Image comparator. Okay, now I'm not storing. I'm just storing the card. Okay, and then a best match. Um, we're going to take this out. Takes an array of cards. Returns, um, I guess, an optional card hmm maybe uh, well this is a good example of the test teaching you what you want I think I think I want this to be images really okay because you've already got existing cards that's the first one coming in then I've got a bunch of images and I'm trying to decide if any of them are belong to the same card. So these should be UI images. Okay. And if if one matches, what do I get? I guess I get the image bag optionally. And we'll return nil for now. Okay, so here, these, I'm reversing my decision. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it comes to when should I build the cards? Oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Um guess if I had two cards that were identical hmm. 
So I'm assuming the card. Oh. Maybe this is card. Maybe this is a sign I'm driving too far low, too low. Okay. But I think I should be building. Um, cannot find in scope. Image comparator has no best match. Okay, I'm going to take that out. That's in spike view. Cannot find CG wrecked. That seems like an old message. The line it's complaining on is totally. Let's do a clean. Okay, this test should fail. Because <laughs> this should come back nil and best match should, should blow up. Okay. Yes, that's the expected error. All right. Um, now, this bit is the real thing. Okay. So somehow the heart of it is there. Okay. And what we want to do is run through each one. Okay. So for, oh, how do you do it here? For each card and cards. is unused that doesn't seem right yeah as you see <laughs> I look up stuff all the time okay uh, for each it's swift Capital E. This is card stuff for each. Okay. For each. really map I think
So this is the card, dot compute distance to each card dot features. I don't know how much I want to deal with that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, compute distance. I guess I'll put the whole thing in a try for the moment. the scores Okay. All right. So if what's the matter? scores dot I want the index of the minimum value um, You know, I'm not getting this together just right. Okay. Um, scores at this point is an array. Let's let's just treat it like one, four, and. Uh, what is it? It's numerated. Yes, that's what I want. 
Um, Well, ugh, okay. Um, let minimum equals scores dot min. Okay, and again, I'm going to search. Is there a way to get the... If there's a way to do this easily... Okay, well, we can do it kind of like that. I'm just going to try and get something to uh, run with here. 
for a moment. Okay, and run our test and stop there. Okay, my time's up for the day. Uh, I think I took too big of a bite. Is it running? Build failed. Okay, well, we will start there next time. I will find out how to compute a minimum <laughs> or uh, an absolute value just in case. Okay, um, well, this syntax error will give us somewhere to, uh, to start with um, next time, but uh, we'll pick up here. So again, I think we're out of the spike range. We're kind of trying to do a more production code. Um, this test that took, you know, half an hour, it's too big a bite. Um, and I'll do better next time, I hope. Okay, and I'll give it one last chance. Build failed. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I can't resist. It's like one more character. Is that all it takes? Load. Okay, well, we will pick up there. That's not even right. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for joining today and uh, hope to catch you in the future. Next time is probably this coming Friday, which is March something. <laughs> and uh, let's see, is that fourth maybe? Um, I think I'm going to be gone on Sunday or unavailable Sunday, but uh, I should be able to do this on next Friday. So uh, same time, 1 to 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Hope you can join me. Thanks for joining today. Bye-bye.